Hello, yeah, in this video, I'll be explaining about what is an ideal transformer, what are the properties of an ideal transformer, and the EMF equation related to it, right? So if we talk about an ideal transformer and see the properties, then you can say here that if we talk about the winding, then the primary and secondary has no resistance, okay? The flux, flux, there should be no leakage flux. If we talk for the permeability, it should be infinitely large, which means that a very small or you can say ki a zero quantity of current is required to establish the flux in the core. Okay. If we talk for the core losses, which comprises of what the eddy current as well as the hysteresis loss, then this, it should be neglected. Right. Now, next is here you can see, uh, I'm explaining you uh, first. If we go for the AMF equation first, you should just um, know some facts about it. That V1 is what? V1 is the applied voltage in the primary having N1 turns. Okay. Now what will happen? This primary current, IE, the MMF, MMF is what? N1 in, into IE. This MMF, N1, IE will set a flux phi in the core of the transformer. Okay. And as we are talking for the transformer on no load, it means what uh, the switch is open and here you can see the transformer is on no load. Now, if we talk, if we go further, we can say, if we talk for the EMF equation, okay. Yeah. If we go for the EMF equation, yeah, here you can write the flux phi. Phi is a sinusoidal quantity. As V1 is sinusoidal, so what will happen? The flux generated, the MMF as well as the flux generated will also be a sinusoidal quantity. So you can write phi as phi m sin omega t. Or you can write it as the induced EMF even can be written as what? According to Lenz law, EMF should be minus N1 into d phi by dt. Or you can write as at minus n1 omega phi m into cos omega t. Next what? It should be n1 omega phi m into sine omega t minus pi by 2. Okay. Now for the uh, for this flux to have a maximum value we can say that this term should be equal to what? 1. Right. So here you can write it as. The maximum value E max is what? N1 omega into phi m. This is the maximum value. Now, if we talk about the RMS value, it can be what? The RMS value is E1 max upon root 2, right? Which you can write as root 2 pi f n1 into phi m. This is your equation 1. Now same same is the case for the secondary. If we go on the secondary side, same same way the induced EMF small a2 will be what? n2 into d phi by dt. And if you write the same equation, you will get what? The RMS value for this is what? root 2 pi f n2 into phi m. This is your second equation. Okay. Now, from equation 1 and 2, you can see that your E1 upon E2 is equal to what? N1 upon N2. Okay. From 1 and 2. Now, if we talk for the phasor diagram, in phasor, I will show you here. You can see since the induced EMF, the RMS value of induced EMF is what? It should be equal and opposite to what? The applied voltage V1. Okay. This is your flux phi as it's an inductive load. So V1 will lead the your flux phi or the current with an angle of 90 degree. Okay. And since IE will be in phase, it's the uh, component responsible for producing the flux. So it will be in phase with the flux phi. Okay. 
so this was about the phasor diagram of an ideal transformer on no load in the next lecture i'll be explaining you the ideal transformer on full load as well as the practical transformers okay thank you